Hey everyone, Mr. Toda here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to Flip Lesson 9.3. And today we're going to talk about cell respiration and how fermentation plays a part in that. In this lesson, you should know all of these key terms. All right. If you're unsure of them, uh, come back and take a look at them. Watch the video again. Feel free to screenshot them now. All right. So as we talk about cell respiration and finish it up, all right, it's important that we talk about anaerobic versus aerobic respiration, right? We've talked about the two types of respiration before, okay? Now, aerobic respiration, right, is respiration that requires oxygen. And this takes place in the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, right? They both require oxygen gas. Whereas glycolysis is anaerobic respiration, which means it can happen without the presence of oxygen. So that makes us think of maybe some situations where an organism doesn't have oxygen. So if you're a bacteria or a fungus that's living in an environment where there is no oxygen gas, or even if you're a human being where maybe your muscles deep inside of you are not getting as much oxygen as possible, right? They're only going to be able to do anaerobic respiration, right? With no oxygen. So if you think about it, they won't be able to do the Krebs cycle. All right. And they won't be able to do the electron transport chain. All right. So when there's no oxygen present, the only process that an organism can do is step one, glycolysis. And since these organisms can only do glycolysis, life has come up with another pathway just to help glycolysis a little bit. So when there's no oxygen present and we're only doing glycolysis, we have what's called fermentation. Okay. And fermentation is a process by which it's a little covered up here, but it's a process by which energy can be released from food molecules in the absence of oxygen. Okay. So again, we're talking about anaerobic, there's no oxygen and fermentation is what happens here. And I, I like throwing this in here. It's just how I like to think about it is that fermentation essentially allows glycolysis to continue. All right. That's the most important piece right there. Fermentation is going to allow this glycolysis to keep going on, even though there's no oxygen, right? And again, we're talking about in a situation where there's no oxygen. So your muscles don't have enough oxygen. You're li living maybe in a, in a thick pond with no oxygen present. So again, your body or the organism are not doing the Krebs cycle or the electron transport chain. They're only doing glycolysis. And fermentation is just a way to let glycolysis continue a little bit longer so you can keep making these two ATPs, right? We're not worried about the other 34 we're going to make down here. We're only making these two ATPs. So it's only a little bit of energy, but it'll be enough for whatever organism's doing it to keep living. All right. And just a little cheat sheet down here without getting too much into it. Uh, but this is basically how fermentation happens, right? We've seen this chart before glycolysis, right? Where two ATP come out and two NADH come out and we'd make two molecules of pyruvic acid. And without getting too lost in the weeds, essentially what fermentation does is it allows glycolysis to keep happening by taking the NADHs that are made and releasing them out of the hydrogen. So the NAD plus goes back can pick up another one. We can split up another glucose in half make more pyruvic acid, all right? So in fermentation, we're not actually making more ATP from the same molecule, right? There's no more ATP coming out down here, but we're basically allowing it to continue by sending these NADs back so that we can take a new molecule of glucose, chop it in half, make two more ATP, send the NADs back, take a new molecule of glucose again, chop it in half, make two more ATP, Essentially, we're just allowing the body to keep making these two more ATP as much as we can. So again, really just to summarize it and make it really short, right? Basically, fermentation is just what's happening to allow glycolysis to continue. Don't focus too much on the chart down here, right? You, if you want to know about the uh, NADAs, NAD pluses going back, you can. But really, it's just a process that allows glycolysis to keep happening, okay? So we actually have two types of fermentation, okay? The first one you may have heard of before is called alcoholic fermentation. 
All right. And this allows glycolysis to continue. Like we said, it's one of the two types of fermentation. However, the byproduct, a waste you make from it, is alcohol. So some organisms that do this would be yeast, right? So if you've ever heard of yeast before, um, usually you use that in making breads, right? It's what make the, the dough in the bread rise up and nice and fluffy. Okay. They also use yeast, obviously, when uh, manufacturers make alcohol. All right. Bacteria also do alcoholic fermentation. Humans, animals, plants, we don't do alcoholic fermentation, right? Basically, very, very tiny, invisible organisms do it. And as you can guess, with alcoholic fermentation, as we just said, the byproduct is alcohol. So we see here I have some pictures of beer and champagne glasses, right? And we know that in beer and in champagne and wine and all these other alcoholic drinks, Okay, there's an, an alcohol molecule, um, which is partial of, amount of liquid. There's some sugar, which is why it tastes sweet usually. And of course, we all know the sound of uh, a champagne bottle opening, or if you ever heard your parents open any other type of alcoholic beverage, it usually makes a pop, right? And that pop is carbon dioxide gas that's escaping. So in alcoholic fermentation, right? Basically, what's happening is these microorganisms, the yeast, right, these little fungi, are doing fermentation. They're allowing glycolysis to continue, right, by making two more ATPs, two more ATPs. But the byproduct is alcohol and carbon dioxide, where we get that fizziness and the alcohol molecule. All right. And our second type of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. All right, and chances are you've definitely heard of lactic acid fermentation before, especially if you've ever gone to the gym, worked out, if you're a runner, an athlete. And lactic acid fermentation is what happens in most animals, uh, most larger living organisms instead of bacteria and small fungi. All right, and again, lactic acid, it's a type of fermentation, like we said on the last slide. It allows glycolysis to continue by making two more ATP, two more ATP, and letting us keep splitting the glucose molecule in half. However, the byproduct is lactic acid. And lactic acid, if you've ever gone for a run, lifted a lot of weights, done anything really physical, you usually get a burning sensation in your muscles, right? So that burning sensation is the lactic acid that's building up, right? And you can see here, this guy's on fire. He's running so hard, right? That lactic acid, the more and more fermentation that we do, the more lactic acid builds up and the more sore your muscles get. And some ways we can get rid of it, right, are by trying to do aerobic respiration. And if I go all the way back here, right, the two parts of aerobic respiration are the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And again, we call them aerobic because they use oxygen. So to get rid of this lactic acid fermentation, right? Your body takes in a lot of oxygen. So after you run really hard, you're breathing heavy, right? Your body's taking in oxygen to try and absorb and get rid of some of this lactic acid. So again, these are the two types of fermentation, all right? And you need to know which organisms do which. So alcoholic fermentation is only done by small organisms like yeast, fungi, some bacteria, and lactic acid fermentation is done by bigger organisms such as animals, plants, anything that's going to be using oxygen to get rid of that lactic acid. All right. And really the last part that comes out of this and, and kind of wraps up the chapter here is talking about quick energy versus long energy. All right. So again, always back to the three steps of cell respiration here, glycolysis, the first one, which is anaerobic, right? Anaerobic. Let's put a little A-N. And the Krebs cycle, step two, and the electron transport chain, which are aerobic, right? They need oxygen. So it really comes back to all these. And it has to deal with the fact that when you need energy from your food, right, from your glucose that you eat, sometimes you need different amounts of energy. So when cells really just need quick energy, they only, they just do glycolysis coupled with fermentation, right? So in animals, lactic acid fermentation. And here's the key thing that you need to know, okay? This only lasts no more than 90 seconds, so a minute and a half tops, right? So if you are doing a lot of energy really quickly, 
right? It's much quicker to do glycolysis, boom, two ATP kicked out, boom, two ATP kicked out, right? If you need to do a little fermentation so that you can keep doing glycolysis, that's fine, but you're making a lot of energy quickly, all right? Now, like we said, you can't do this forever. So when your body needs long-term energy, right, more than 90 seconds, that's our key number, right, it's actually going to do all three parts of cell respiration. It's going to take a glucose molecule, cut it in half in glycolysis, send the pyruvic acid down to the Krebs cycle, make two ATP, ten, send all the electron carriers here down to electron transport chain, boom, 32 ATP. You can see how long it took me to say that right there. Now imagine your body doing it millions of times, right? It takes a little bit longer to do all of cell respiration, but again, you're making a lot more energy, 34 ATP instead of just two for every glucose molecule. So when the body needs long-term energy, right, to get 36 ATP, it's going to do all of cell respiration versus if you stand up or do something quick for under 90 seconds, even a lot of activity, it's just going to do glycolysis and lactic acid fermentation. All right, and a great example of this is two really super athletes right here. So this guy is probably one of the fastest guys in the world. He holds the current record uh, for the 100-meter dash, Usain Bolt. And I think he ran 100 meters, and I think it was 9.58 seconds or something like that. Seconds, 9.58 seconds at 100 meters, okay? And down here, right, we have a recent winner, Shalane Flanagan, right? One of the um, – she's actually from Massachusetts. I think she's from – Marshfield, someplace on the South Coast, right? But Massachusetts resident, she won the New York Marathon this fall, uh, first American woman to win it in a while. And I think she ran the New York Marathon something like two hours, 26 minutes, I forget how many seconds, all right? But we have two really different athletes here, right? Usain Bolt running super, super fast, but he's only running for 10 seconds, right? If this is a number line, let's say that's 10 seconds, okay? He only needs energy for 10 seconds, but he needs a lot of it. Versus Shalane Flanagan, right, when she's running the New York City Marathon, the Boston Marathon, and winning it, two hours and 26 minutes, right? She's going to be using energy for so, 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 so long, right? Two hours and 26 minutes versus just 10 seconds. Her body's going to be doing cell respiration. It's going to be breaking down glucose, other fats and big sugars, right? Breaking them down through glycolysis and then through the Krebs cycle and then through the electron transport chain making as much energy as her body can to try and get her through that race. Versus Usain Bolt, he's going to do glycolysis for about, boom, 10 seconds. His cells are going to make a ton of ATP, a little bit of lactic acid fermentation. His muscles will be sore, but he made a ton of energy. So again, just a great example here, right? Uh, less than 90 seconds, you're going to be doing just glycolysis with lactic acid fermentation, like a sprinter. All right. And if you're doing long term energy, probably more than like 20 minutes, right, you're going to be doing well more than 90 seconds. After 20 minutes, you start to break down fat and bigger sugars. Right. Anyone that's doing that is going to be doing cell respiration. OK, uh, so that's it for this lesson, guys. Again, a lot of words, but not too much material. Right. Make sure you know fermentation. OK, you know the difference between quick energy and long energy the two types of fermentation, who does them, okay? This really, really is important to cell respiration, and it applies to you and how your bodies get energy from food. Uh, review the, the key terms, watch the lesson, take good notes. If you have any questions, you can always email me or tweet at me, at Mr. Toda, 13. All right, guys, have a great night. Thanks.